Here's a quick topic that's really good for intuition about exponential growth in general, um, but especially useful for um, investing. And it's a very, it's a, I want to derive a common rule that people in finance will tell you. Um, so we want a rule of thumb for how long does it take for an investment to double. Um, and this is going to be a nice use of, of logarithms. So the first question, so we want a rule of thumb. It doesn't have to be super exact. It should be as simple as possible. Um, and so the question is, should we use the fancy formula that depends on exactly how often it's compounded, the n? It's a little complicated. Or should we use the streamlined formula that brings in e, but otherwise is simpler? Well, for rules of thumb, we definitely we don't want to overcomplicate things. And we've seen already that as long as the compounding is reasonably often, PERT is a good approximation. So we are not going to use that more complicated formula. Um, and we're going to use PERT. OK, so the next thing is, um, do we have to worry about the principle? Well, depending on, you might think that it's going to give you different rules of thumb depending on exactly how much money you start with. But we've seen, I think we've seen enough examples now, that um, we can be pretty confident that it, the doubling time is going to be the same no matter what you start with. And we can demonstrate that. So we're going to set up an equation. And we're going to look at, depending on how much you started with, we want to get double that. So we're going to say 2p is p e to the rt. So that's always going to be, no matter what p is, um, what the equation you'd set up to double it. And immediately, verifying our observations before that the principle doesn't really matter when we're thinking about how long does it take to double, the p's cancel out. OK, now we can take the ln of both sides. This is exactly a great situation of turning an exponential equation into a logarithmic equation. Log of 2, natural log of 2, is rt. And so t, let me move it over here, is the natural log of 2 over the interest rate. Cool. Now, so there's this new number, natural log of 2, that you, we'd like to, to know and have um, at least roughly ready to, at hand. Well, it turns out to be 0.6931. Um, and that's more. That's definitely more accuracy or more precision than we need for a rule of thumb. So I'm going to say it's approximately. I'm going to go down to um, just you know just a little under two sig figs and say 0 0.70 over r. Okay, so now let's do an example, and we're going to streamline it even a tiny bit more in a second. We're going to say let's say r is um, let's say seven percent. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. 7% interest. OK, so that's 0 0.07. OK, so now the doubling time is approximately um, 0 0.70 over 0 0.07. And that's 10. That's 10 years. Awesome. OK, um, so that's assuming, of course, the T and the interest rate that was measured in years. So this is if this was an annual interest rate. You might think, where did years come from? Well, that's the assumption that the, if the interest rate is 7% per year, then there's secretly a 0.07 per year here, if you spell it right. And then that's why the years come in. Okay, So this is not quite how you're usually uh, told to, to do it um, by people who do mortgages and loans and things like that. Um, there's a slight variation where you keep this as a percent. And what we can do is we can do 70 over 7, just multiplying the top and bottom by 7, by 10. So we're going to leave this as a percent. In other words, we're going to take this what it really is. It's really an 0.07. We're going to multiply it by 100 to get the numerical value of the percentage. To compensate for that, we've got to multiply the top by 70, by 10. Uh, we're going to multiply it by 100. Uh, sorry. To compensate that, we're multiplying the top by 100 as well in 70. So you get 10 years again. Yay. So this is called the rule of 70. And some people do the rule of 72. I think that's because maybe uh, that is slightly more accurate for if it's really monthly compounding. But if we're doing uh, rule of, rules of thumb, I think 70 is probably pretty good. And that's actually closer to the continuous compounding result anyway. OK, so another example, if the interest rate is, say, 3.5%, a little bit more uh, realistic now for an investment. Although the stock market, uh, who knows what it, what, what it can do, you know, day to day, year to year. But 7% isn't, isn't ridiculous for the stock market. Anyway, 3.5%, we would just say 
the toppling time is approximately 70 divided by 3.5, and that's 20 years. Yeah, years. Okay. So, for example, uh, this investment, you can go further than that. This investment will quadruple. That's two doublings in about 40 years. Okay. Or what will it do very roughly in 30 years? If we know the doubling is 20 and the quadrupling is 40, it will do something in between doubling and quadrupling. Okay, not exactly tripling. Okay, that would be straight line math, and that's not quite what's happening, but it still gives you a ballpark. Very, very roughly, you could say it, it maybe is going to triple given these calculations. Right, that's good. Some, I think it's enough examples.